friend, 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 friend. Jesus calls me friend, friend. Jesus calls me friend, friend. Jesus calls me friend, 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 friend. Jesus calls me friend, friend. Jesus calls me friend, friend. Jesus calls me friend, 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 friend. Jesus calls me friend, friend. Jesus calls me friend, friend. Jesus calls me friend, friend, friend. Jesus calls me friend, friend. Jesus calls me friend, friend. Jesus calls me friend. Sing praises unto God. Sing praises. Hallelujah. One, two. Sing praises unto God, sing praises. Sing praises unto God, sing praises. Hallelujah. Sing praises unto God, sing praises. Sing praises unto God, sing praises. Hallelujah. For God is our King over all. Sing praises. Understanding, so clap your hands and shout, Woo! all ye people, for he is to be praised, to be praised. Sing praises, sing praises unto God, sing praises, sing praises unto God, sing praises, hallelujah. Sing praises unto God, sing praises. Sing praises. Hallelujah. For God, for God is our King over all. Sing praises. Praises unto Him with understanding. So clap your hands and shout, Woo, all ye people. For He is to be praised. To be praised when trouble, when trouble in your life, sing. What do you do when there is trouble in your life? Sing praises. Hallelujah. When trouble in your life, sing praises. When trouble in your life, sing praises. Hallelujah. For God is our King over all the earth. Sing praises unto him with understanding. So clap your hands and shout, holy people. For he is to be praised, to be praised. When trouble, when trouble in your life. Sing. What do you do when there is trouble in your life? Sing praises. Hallelujah. When trouble in your life, sing praises. When trouble in your life, sing praises. Hallelujah. For God. For God is our King. Over all. Over all the earth. Sing praises. Sing praises unto Him with understanding. So clap your hands. So clap your hands and shout. Get 
David. Praise the Lord for what he has done for me. My soul does magnify. My soul does magnify the Lord. And my spirit. And my spirit. Praise his name. Even death could not hold him captive. Even in the grave. Brighter than the morning 
love to pray. I 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 love to pray.
spirits. Oh, we worship you. We worship you. We worship you. We worship you. We worship you, God. We worship you. We worship you, Lord Jesus. There's no other that deserves all the glory. One, two, one. Praise the Lord. Amen. Bless the Lord. Amen. We honor him tonight. The Lord is so good. He is so good. So good. Amen. How do you feel? Amen. <laughs> Glory to God. This has been really, really good. This has been a very easy fast, really, um, for those of us who didn't have to be out and about <laughs> <Praise the Lord. laughs> and didn't have to deal with the secular world. Amen. It was quite easy just sitting before the Lord all day long, talking to the Lord. Mm. <laughs> Don't get jealous now. <laughs> Keep the heart pure. <laughs> Praise the Lord. The Lord has, has indeed already begin to instruct on this on this fast. I'm I'm really, really excited about hearing from the Lord. Uh, some some of you, this may be your first time fasting, or some of you have not 
really accustomed to, to fasting. What we're trying to do is bring the ministry into a lifestyle of fasting. That's what we need uh, with the revelations that God has given us, this word that we are responsible for. We're going to have to give an account of everything that God has given us. And we need to be as sensitive to the Holy Spirit as possible. And fasting helps that out. It helps us to become more sensitive to the Holy Spirit, to actually hear God, to listen for the voice of the Lord. I was uh, praying this morning. I was talking to the Lord. And I asked the Lord to do something. You know, I, I asked the Lord to do something for me. And, uh, and I just said to him, I said, Lord, you know, there's no question in me as to whether you can do it. Um, I just want to know that you will do it. I just want you to do that. I just, it's something I just want you to do, um, for me. And... He did it. He just, he just did it. While I was talking to him, he, he, he did it. Praise the Lord. And uh, I told him, I said, I know we don't supposed to put out fleeces. You know, we're supposed to have faith. I said, but Lord, I, <laughs> I want you to do this to just, to, just to edify me. Just, just to edify me and, 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 you know, I need you to edify me. I need you to edify me. Sometimes we just need the Lord to edify us, just to encourage us, you know. I just want you to do this little bitty thing to encourage me, to move forward, to, so I can have a little bit more confidence, a little bit more surety, a little bit more uh, passion or whatever it is I need to move forward. Just edify me. And just sitting there talking to the Lord, Ricky, just talking to him. I got up early this morning and just sat there and just talked to the Lord. And I said, just do this little thing for me. And the Lord did it, saints. The Lord did it while I was talking to him. He just did it. And I'm like, wow, okay. You know, we, we can go now. We can go on, on. Praise you, Jesus. My confidence level went, whoo, way up. <laughs> Praise the Lord. It's amazing. I said that. I told you about that because every one of us should have those kind of experiences with God. That's not unique for us leaders. That's not a unique thing for us leaders. Every one of us that are sons of God should be privy to communication with the Lord. Now, there, there is no instructions really in the New Testament about fasting. We are and when I say instructions, I mean there's no guidelines or um, that tell us how to fast or whatever. It just tells us to fast. You know, it makes sure that we know that we should be fasting. Uh, and that fasting is a form of supplication unto the Lord. But the Old Testament is our schoolmaster, right? And we can go into the schoolmaster and uh, see where the heart of the Lord is, because that's what schoolmaster does. It, it reminds us or it instructs us in the heart and mind of the Father. Let us know what the Father is thinking and what he will receive and what he will not receive and where his heart and mind is. So I want us to go for the benefit of those who are new to fasting to the Isaiah 58. This is a, a very common chapter that most people use when they're fasting to explain what fasting really is. Um, but let us see what we can get out of it tonight. And I, I'm going to begin reading at the, at the first verse. Cry aloud, spare not, lift up thy voice like a trumpet. And show my people their transgression and the house of Israel their sins. Yet they seek me daily. How many of us can say that we're actually seeking the Lord? How many in here are actually seeking God? 
you want to hear from God. You, you're seeking his face. You're seeking God so that you can be better. You, you know that you need to be better. Amen? Amen? Glory to God. He says, yet they say, yet they seek me daily and delight to know my ways. Anybody want to know the way of the Lord? Amen. Want to know his ways. You know, some of us know his ways. Some of us really do know his ways. Some of us know of him. Some of us actually do know his ways. That's, Moses had that privilege. He knew the, he understood the ways of God. He understood God's way. And when you understand God's way, you can anticipate God. I learned that years ago, that I can anticipate what God will do. And that's why the scripture tells us to prophesy according to knowledge. I prophesy according to, in people's lives, when I'm talking to people sometimes, I begin to prophesy into their lives based upon my knowledge of God's way. Are you understanding me? Glory to God. I, I understand God's way. And if I, if, you know, just like two plus two equals four, amen, there, there are some two plus twos in the scripture. If, if uh, for instance, one of those is the proud, God will abase. The humble, God will exalt. So therefore, if you're entertaining someone that is full of pride and you can't tell them anything, you can't talk to them, they will not hear, you can prophesy. God will abase that individual. Amen. Because he surely will. Sooner or later, he will be abased. If he continues in that way, if he, do, if he do, does not repent and humble himself. Glory to God. So um, there's some of us that actually know his ways and can speak about God according to our knowledge of his ways. According to our knowledge of his ways. And, and, and one of the things that, that we need to be mindful of is that Learning God's ways don't come from just reading the scriptures. Learning God's ways come from application of the scripture in your own life and then seeing God's response to that application. Documenting God's response. This is called comprehending the length. Some of you remember that? Comprehending the length? Glory to God. When, 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 we, when we see how God responds how God reacts or responds to, to our disposition, we document that. We document how God responds to, to our disposition. Then we, can, we are comprehending what God will do. So comprehending his ways is not just reading the scripture. It's also living, living and doing and, and watching how God responds to, to our disposition his response to our disposition. Glory to God. Amen? Praise you, Jesus. And not only our disposition, but the disposition of others. Amen? Because we can learn the ways of God indirectly. It doesn't have to be my disposition. It could be observing. I could be observing your disposition and then observing how God responds to your disposition. Are you hearing me? I'm learning the ways of God. I'm learning the ways of God through observation, personal observation and application of God's word. Uh, one, another another uh, way that uh, this is done too is when we pray, when we pray, the scriptures say believe. And so we bring forth the, 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 the spirit of faith in prayer so that we can be guaranteed that God will hear us and answer us. But there's also another, there's also another thing I want to insert right here. And that is faith in the word itself. Faith in the word. Because many times you may not hear God audibly. A God may not come and just speak directly to you. But God speaks to us through his word. He speaks to us through his word. 
And there has to, there has to, to be inside of us, if we're going to please the Lord, and if we're going to commune with him in fasting um, or in prayer, if we're going to commune with him in fasting and in prayer, then we must also uh, have faith in what his word has said. We must, we must have faith and trust in the word of God. Because if you come to God, if, uh, for instance, on this fast, if you're coming to God without faith in his word, you, you're listening for God. You know, people, when, when people fast, they listen for God. They, they, they want God to say something to them, whether it be audibly or, or in their spirit or whether God talks to them through someone. But they are listening for God. They want God to say something to them. Uh, and they believe that that, that saying will, will make them stronger and carry them a little bit further. But you've got to come to God in a certain disposition. There's a certain disposition that every one of us must be in when we approach God. When, you know, notice what God is saying about these people. Say, you seek me daily. You, you claim to be seeking me daily is what he's saying. God is being, this writer, Isaiah, is being very sarcastic here. He's saying that you claim to be seeking me. You claim to be searching and for me and trying to get me to respond to you. So you're coming to me with fastings and, and, and prayer. Glory to God. But there has to be a posture. There's a certain posture that we must be in in order to approach God. And, and one of the things that, one of, one of the dispositions that we must have is that we must believe the word. We must believe what's written. If we don't believe the word of God, then we don't have very much, we don't have very much, uh, we won't have very much success in prayer. Because you gotta, you gotta believe the word first. See, sometimes, you know, they have a saying in the world about putting the cart before the horse or the heart, horse before the cart or whatever. I think it's the cart before the horse, right? Um, that's what we do when we go to God when we go to God and we want God to respond to us, we go to God in prayer and we want God to talk to us. We want a word from the Lord. That people run from church to church looking for a word from the Lord. They want God to say something to them specifically to them and, and, and address their situation or address where they are spiritually. You know, that we're looking for a word from the Lord. But God is saying many times his people come to him looking for a word from him without first believing in the word that he's already sent. So God is saying, no, wait a minute. Wait a minute. You don't believe what I've already said. Why would I say any more? I've given you 66 books that you don't, that you don't regard. So why would I say anything else to you? And this is why there's, there's such a lack of success. There's so, so, um, so few success in prayer or in, in communion with God for the church. Because many of the, much of the church does not believe the written word. We don't believe it. The scripture said we must believe on him as the scripture does say. Amen? We got to believe the way the scripture say. And some of us, of course have our own ideologies and our own philosophies and, and all of that, glory to God. But beyond that, some of us just simply don't believe the word. We just don't believe what's written, amen. And we're last, lack, lackadaisical about uh, the things pertaining to godliness, things that God told us to be very fervent and serious about. We are not so. But if we don't believe the word, then your approach to God is nil. You got to believe the word first. You got to believe what he said here in this. And you may not know all of this, but what you know, if you receive that, what you know and embrace it. And what does it mean to believe? In, in uh, World Conference, I believe I taught what belief is. To believe means to commit. We say we trust God, right? We say we trust God. Then to believe is to commit ourselves to that trust. We've got to commit ourselves to the one we trust, the one we say we trust. And if we have not 
if we are, if we are not in submission unto God, then that is a evidence, that is evidence of our lack of belief. That's evidence of our lack of belief. Are you hearing God? Amen. So it's very important on this fast how you approach God. Your approach is, is very important. And if your heart is not open, if your heart is not open, because if you don't believe the word, then there's some, there's, there's some closure there. Your heart is closed or it's hardened against certain principles of God. If you are going to be blessed of the Lord and God is going to be responsive to you, you've got to adhere to his principles. You've got to believe in his, his principles. You've got to accept his principles as law for your own life. They must be law for your life. And if they are not law for your life, if they are not law for your life, you have not really accepted them. You have not really accepted. You're not in agreement with God. You're not in agreement. Because this word has principles in it. It has principles. And, it, and most of the things that people don't believe in the scriptures is not doctrine. Most of the things that people don't believe is the things that it instructs us to do or the way it instructs us to live. Amen. It's not about whether I believe in baptism or whether I believe in, in, in head covering and things of that nature. It, that's, that's really not the issues that much. But God has instructed us to be holy. God has instructed us to love one another. He's instructed us to even love our enemies. These are principles. These are principles. This is it's not about, you know, uh, wearing open-toe shoes or, or not coloring your hair and all of that stuff. God doesn't care about those appearances, those things like that. Amen. But those things that pertain to the principles of life, the principles of godliness, you have to believe in those. Because if you're seeking God and want God to respond to you, the first thing God is looking at is whether you actually believe in his principles. And there are some, there are some people that are seeking the Lord or will come inside of a fast or go on a fast to seek the Lord and have, and have not given any regard to his principles. So what does that mean? That means that they are not going to be successful on that fast unless they repent. And their repentance has to be specific. It has to be very specific. When, when I'm wrong, when I'm in a, in a wrong place, I make known to God. I acknowledge. Repentance is to acknowledge, acknowledge, and turn away from. Glory to God. We have to acknowledge where we really are. We have to acknowledge it. God want to hear us say it. He want to hear us say where we are. He want to hear us say, you know, Lord, I have failed you in this, or I failed you in that, or I failed brother so-and-so, or I failed sister so-and-so. Glory to God. One of the things God said to me today while I was uh, talking with him today, he said, um, and this, I was writing the study guide, and uh, for, for, for Founders Week, and he said, he said, my, my people, my people have made light of my life, the life of Christ. We talk about Christ living in us, and we, we, we boast that, that we are the sons of God, and that we have put on the new man. But the new man has a life that we have not always submitted to. We have not merged. We have not made that merger, that agreement with the life of Christ. We have not made that life our life. Yet we continue from day to day. But I remember John saying in his epistle to the church, he says, um, that life which was from the beginning, that's the life that we came to declare unto you. And the Lord was letting me know that his people have made light of his life. The life of Christ that is in us. It, it ought not be hard. It ought not be a struggle for us to walk in the principles of godliness, loving our enemies and loving our, our, uh, loving our fellow um, servants in the Lord, that ought not to be a hard thing. 
Godliness should not be a hard thing. It should not be hard. But it becomes a struggle. It becomes a struggle when we have not regarded that that's my life. That God has given me new life. And now, just as Christ was resurrected, I have been resurrected in the newness of life, Romans 6. I've been resurrected in the newness of life, a new life. And so it's, it's almost as if God's people, God's people, they got all the knowledge about being resurrected in a new life, but that new life is still something that we're trying to obtain. That's, that, that, that's, that doesn't make sense. And that's what makes fasting so difficult. Because our perspective of who we are and what we are is still not accurate. You know, we, 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 we're in Romans 6 where it says that we have been resurrected into a, in, the, in the newness of life. Just as Jesus was resurrected from the dead, so have we been resurrected into the newness of life. We, have, we, we can now walk in the newness of life. A new life is what it's saying. We have a new life. So if, if we have been given that new life, where then is the struggle? Where is the struggle? Because that new life is Christ. It's Christ. That new life is Christ. Jesus Christ. He's the new man. And the scripture told us to put him on. And then it told us to let the mind that was in, that let this mind be in us that, was in, that, was, that is in Christ Jesus, right? So what that, what that means is, let the soul take on the mind of Christ. The soul needs to take on the mind of Christ. Amen? And, and so if, if, if there's a struggle, if there's a struggle, then we, we, we have got to be honest with ourselves and admit that we have not yet submitted to the life that's in us. We have not yet submitted to that Christ. And I, and I want us, while we're on this fast, I want you to look at, yourself daily, hour by hour, minute by minute, and ask yourself, am I really walking, talking, and responding in the life of Christ? Is my attitude that of Christ? Is my disposition that of Christ? Is are the things that I say, are they the things that Christ would say? See, we got to be honest with that. That's why the scripture tells us to be slow to speak. Because if you're not honest with that, fasting is futile. It doesn't make sense to fast. You got to be honest with, where am I? Where do I stand? Where do I stand? It, this life that is in me, how much of it is manifesting in my lifestyle? Does my lifestyle actually manifest Christ? Am I speaking the words of the Lord? When I began to think about this, there's some things that, you know, you know what it did? It started me to really thinking before I talk. What are you about to say? Is this something Christ would say? Started thinking. And see, this is what fasting is supposed to do. It's supposed to make us sensitive to these things. We're supposed, you know, and it, and it should not be that we're only sensitive to these things in fasting because that makes fasting a ritual. We should be sensitive about these things every day, every moment of the day. Because if we're only sensitive about them in fasting, then fasting is, is truly just a ritual. And that's a time when we come and purify ourselves and purify our thoughts and purify our little actions and our little ways. And then when the fast is over, we go back to business as, as normal. We go back to being whatever we were before. Don't you think God knows that? He knows that. 
And he judges that. So we have to be very honest, saints. We have to be very honest. And, and what I'm looking at is, I'm looking at, why is it so difficult? I have to ask myself, if, it, if, it's, if, if it's hard, if, if holiness, any form of holiness is hard, why? And I discovered that it's not. Living holy is not hard. It's not hard. Living holy is a preference. Something is hard when it's not your preference. Come on. When it's not your preference, that's when it's hard. But when it's, when it's a preference, when you prefer holiness, it's not hard. It's not hard. Because when you prefer it, you offer no resistance to it. Are you hearing God? You offer no resistance. So that life, that life that is, that is in God, that life that, that he has put it placed in us, that life should be manifest. And if it's not manifest, then we need to know why. Why? And we need to be honest about that. We need to be honest about why. Why, why. why isn't it manifest? It's because I prefer something other than Christ. Or what I prefer, what I prefer is contrary to Christ. Sometimes we prefer our own personality. And sometimes our personality is abrasive to others. Sometimes our personality is a vexation to the Holy Ghost. I can testify of that because my personality was very abrasive to the Holy Spirit. He didn't like it. He did not like my personality. And that's why he said, I don't like you. That's why God said, I don't like you. He loved me dearly. Thank God he loved me, but he did not like me. He did not like my personality. And I had to change it. Because if I didn't, what was I going to do after that? After God said, I don't like it, then what do you do? Where do you go? Who do you serve? <laughs> how, how do you continue to serve in that disposition when he's already told you, I don't like that, and, and you, you, you can't offer that up to me. That's not, that's not I don't receive that. And you cannot, you cannot lead my people with that. You can't be that way and lead my people. I don't want that as an example for my people. Come on, somebody. When God told me, he says, I can tell you to go from, from point A to point B, and you will do everything in your power to get over there. You'll get to point B. You're going to get there, Mary Banks. You're going to get there. But boy, you're going to be so destructive on the way. In the name of the Lord, I'm doing what God told me to do. I'm going where God told me to go, and I'm tearing up everything between here and there. I'm tearing it up. Glory to God. Anything get in my way. I'm, I was so destructive. Glory to God. And God said, I don't, I don't like that. Don't think that that is something that you are rendering to me because it's not. It's not. And you know, saints, I was like that a long time, and I was, and I was fasting and praying and and everything, and I know one day, I just know God just, you know, just got tired of it. He just got tired, just like he got tired of those offerings that Israel was bringing to him. Glory to God. He got tired of me. He got tired of me, and I fasted a long time. Because this little stuff you guys are doing is nothing. We fasted. In those days, we really, really fasted. And I said, Thank you, Lord. It was a blessing. Supposing he hadn't said anything. And I just continued. He would have put a clamp on my ministry. He would have capped it off. Because I was too destructive. My personality was destructive. So in the name of the Lord, I was destructive. I would cause him more damage than good. You understand what I'm saying? But I was doing it in the name of the Lord, so I thought it was okay. I thought I was justified. 
And God said, I don't like that. I don't like that. And you cannot lead my people like that. You can't lead my people. You have to be an example for my people. You have to be an example. The people ought to be able to look at you and see Christ. They ought to be able to look at you and see some hope for their own lives. They ought to be able to look at you and see a relationship with me. Someone said to me, someone said this recently. I don't know who I was talking to. I've been talking to so many people lately. But someone said to me, it says, said, I respect you, Dr. Banks. Oh, yeah. Someone, yeah. Long, this person hadn't seen this person in a long time. And this person called me up and they said, you know, they wanted my opinion about something spiritual. And, um, and I, I just told them. And, um, and I said, you may be offended. You may get offended by what I just said to you, but it's the truth. And, and the person said to me, said, no, Dr. Banks, I'm not offended with you. Because one thing I do know, you have a relationship with God. You hear from God. And so that is the, that's the woman that God was trying to make. That's the son of God. So that people would have that testimony that this woman has a relationship with God. You, you, you know, this woman has a relationship with God. Now, I'm not saying that to big me up. I'm saying that because that's how all of us have to be. We have to have, we have to, we, we have to have a reputation where people believe that we are connected to God, that we have a relationship with God. And if our personalities are offensive, if our personalities are getting in the way of that, if, if people can't look at us and, because see, if we, if we have a relationship with God and people can look upon us and see that we have that relationship with the Lord, that gives them hope. Because we're just ordinary. We're no great somebody. We're no wonder, wonder Woman or Superman. Amen. We're just regular people that have, have achieved a relationship with the Lord. We've achieved that relationship with the Lord. And so if, 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 um, if he can do it, then I can do it. You know? And that's, that's the kind of, of, of personality that we have to have a personality that's not abrasive to the spirit of God. It's not abrasive to the people of God. It's not a stumbling block to Christ. It's not a stumbling block for people to see Christ. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. So holiness should not be a hard thing. It should not be hard. And if it is hard, it's because we're denying the life. We're denying the life of Christ. If it's hard, it's because that life that's in you it's just something for you to talk about. It's something for you to testify about, but it's not something that you're living. You've got to become one with the life that is in you. Are you hearing God? Yet you seek me daily. I'm in Isaiah 58 and 2. And delight to know my ways. As a nation that did, righteous, that did righteousness and, for, and forsook not the ordinance of their God. You notice what he's saying here? He's saying, you, you, you seek me daily, and you say you want to really know my ways, and you're acting as if you are people that have kept my ordinances. You act as if you, you're, not, you're, you're not sinning. Now notice what, and see, this is, the, this is the mind and heart of God. What is he saying? He's saying, you're coming to seek me, but you're not acknowledging that you're, you, you're a mess. You act as if you, you've done everything I told you to do. How many times have we gone to the altar? How many times have we said, God, I won't do it anymore. God, forgive me. And then we go right back and do the same thing again. And now we're on a fast. And we're seeking the face of God. And God is saying, now, what, what is your fast about? What are you fasting about? 
you ought to be fasting about yourself and how, how you have dishonored my word. You have not kept my word. You've broken my laws. Now, this may be Old Testament, but this is God's heart. This is God's heart today. John, John told us about that. He says, if we've sinned and then we say that we have no sin, we lie. Huh? First John. Same thing. That's what, that's what Isaiah is saying here. They ask of me the ordinances of justice. They take delight in approaching to God. <laughs> People take delight. They went, oh, when we call a fast, everybody wants to fast. Oh, we're doing something spiritual in the church. Oh, man, I got to get in on that fast. Got to get in on that fast. Got to get in on that conference. Got to get in on that fast track. When spiritual things are called, some people delight in that. They delight in those things. When there's something going on, people delight in them. But God is saying, what about when there's nothing going on? What about when there is no fast? Hmm? When there is no conference, when there is no fast track, when there's no revival, do you delight in approaching me then? Look at verse 3. Wherefore have we fasted, say they, and thou seest not. How is it that we fast and you can't, you're not even observing our fast? Do you hear this? There's, God, is, God is saying, this is, this, is your, this is what you're saying. This is, this is what the people are saying. This is what Israel was saying. Saying so we're fasting and you act as if we're not. You act as if you don't even see that we're, we're, we're fasting here. And thou see if not. Wherefore have we afflicted our soul and thou takest no knowledge. We have afflicted our soul. That's what fasting does. It afflicts the soul because the soul is used to feeding itself, feeding the flesh. It loves to eat. It uses this body to eat. It loves the taste of food. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> it loves the taste of food. It's, it can smell food. <laughs> Glory to God. Amen. And he says, we've afflicted our soul. We've denied ourselves food. The thing that the body loves the most is food. That's true. Isn't that right, Ernesta? <laughs> Glory to God. Baby, <laughs> Anessa say, when do we come down? <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. Wherefore have we afflicted our soul and thou take not, no knowledge? Behold, in the day of your fast, ye find pleasure and exact all your labors. Now, notice what he's saying here. And this is why I, I really don't agree sometimes with the way people fast, some people fast. There's some, some things that I'm just not, just not in agreement with, I guess. That's the best word I can think of. Um, because of this, uh, it says, behold, in the day of your fast, you find pleasure. Some people actually watch television while they're fasting. And I'm not talking about Christian television. Or listen to stuff. Get in conversations that they shouldn't be in while they're fasting. You find pleasure. They go and do Everything they want to do, things that they, they wanted to do, you know, they just go and do them. Things that, you know, like how, how we take off a day and go and uh, go to the beach or, or just, you know, do pleasurable things that we, that we want to do. He said, you don't do that when you're fasting. You don't do that. Then notice what he's telling these people. He says, you exact all your labors. 
You know what that means. You, you work for yourself. Continuously working for yourself. You get up that day and you work, 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 work. You're not talking to me. He said, you exact all your labors. You don't change anything about that day. You don't, he's, that's what he means. You exact all your labors. You make sure you do everything. You don't even talk to me. You do everything you normally do. And some people say, well, I got a job. Okay. That's true. And if you don't work, you probably won't eat. When you come off, you're fast. <laughs> Jesus. However, if you're fasting, you got to make time for God. You got you to gotta take some time out for the Lord. Even if you're working, there has to be some time for the Lord. And because I don't believe, I don't believe that this, that God won't want us to make this legalistic to say that, when you're fasting, you can't work. You know, you can't go to, go to work. I don't believe that that's, God wants us to be that legalistic about this. You know why? Because um, um, Daniel and, and um, Daniel and the Hebrew boys and all those guys down there, those people that were down there in, in, in uh, Babylon, they, they were in captivity, but they had jobs. They had to work but they were able to fast. They fasted while they were working, but they took time out with the Lord. There was time, Daniel prayed three times a day. He prayed three times a day, and it didn't matter who saw him, who, who didn't see him. It didn't matter what he had to do, he took time out to pray, to talk to God. And so even if you're working, you gotta take time. Stop exacting all your labor. Stop being so so precise and all of that, But not, but but giving God just whatever, you know? No, if you're fasting, if you're afflicting your soul, you're afflicting your soul to be in touch with the Father. Isn't that right? Glory to God to, to, to offer. See, fasting is supposed to be a sacrifice. It's supposed to be the offering up of a sacrifice. Offering up a sacrifice. That's what fasting does. It's a supplication to the, to the Lord. It's a, it's a form of worship. It's a form of worship. It's a, it's a sacrifice because you are afflicting the soul. You are afflicting your soul. You're, you're denying yourself the thing that the soul delights in. The soul delights in, in, in uh, shrimp lo mein and hofein and all of that stuff. It delights in it. Hallelujah. It delights in it. <laughs> Glory to God. But when you, when, you, when you forsake that, when you deny yourself of honey roasted chicken and Things like that. Glory to God. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. It's a sacrifice. It's an offering unto the Lord. It's an offering unto the Lord. And when we, when we, when we fast, glory to God, and if, if you really, if you're really, really um, given over to the fast, if you give, go ahead and give yourself over to the fast, and how is that? By praying communing with God, that's when you're giving yourself over to the fast. Go ahead and pray. When I got up this morning, the first thing I did was pray. Because, norm, you know, what I do is I get up in the morning, and sometimes I roll over out of the bed into the chair that I'm going to work in all day. I have a real comfortable fat chair that I work, that I sit in and work all day. And sometimes I just roll over into that chair and start working. And then I'll take out, because normally I'm talking to God during the nighttime, throughout, throughout the night, you know. And so when I wake up in the morning, I'll be like, hi, Lord. How you doing today? Praise the Lord. It, seriously, that's just how I talk. Lord, what are we going to do today? You're going to help me do this thing. I need, I need you to help me do this. And I'll just roll right on over, get on, on the computer and start writing my books or whatever I'm doing. And then throughout, through, some, somewhere during the day, I'll, I'll start to, to pray or whatever. But this morning, because I'm fasting, because I'm fasting, the first thing I did, I began to talk to the Lord. I began to talk to the Lord. You know why? 
because I want to give myself to the fast. I want to give my, my, my supplication unto the Lord. I want to give over to it. And because what happens when you give over to it through, through communion, that's what prayer is, it's communion with God, communication with God. When you do that, you'll find the Holy Spirit will pick you up on the fast. You know what that means, right? When I say the Holy Spirit picks you up on it, you find you're less hungry. You find the hunger will leave you. It will leave you. Just like some of us right now, we don't have to eat tonight. We don't have to go home and eat. We could go forth. We could just go forth because the Holy Spirit has picked us up. He's picked us up. And, it's, and, and, and one of the things I want, want, to, want to say to you just to help you in, in um, those that are new to fasting, one of the things I want to say to you is that when you, when, you, when you first start fasting and you feel like you're really, really hungry, you know, like the first day, um, first or second day, you know, you feel like, wow, I'm so hungry. Actually, you're not really that hungry. If you, if you give yourself over to the fast in communion, that's what keeps you. The communion with God is what keeps you. And if you do that, you'll find that you're not really hungry. You just want to chew. No, seriously, that's, that's, that's real. You know, I found that out the hard way. I found that out the hard way. I was on a fast years ago, years ago when I didn't know anything, just fasting, just fasting. And I got so hungry, probably about the third or fourth day, I got so hungry. And see, we weren't going from six to six, we were going around the clock. And I was so hungry and I said, I better eat because I'm thinking about food, so I might as well eat. And the soon as I ate, soon as I bit into it, started the chewing on that food, I realized I didn't have to have it. I mean, the moment I bit into it and began to, you know, to chew and swallow, I realized I didn't have to do it. I, I wasn't hungry. As Soon as I swallowed, I realized I wasn't hungry. I simply, see, because the, we're used to the chewing sensation. We're used to that. And, and once you, once you give yourself over, when, when that hunger, when you, when you really start to feel like, man, I'm so hungry, just tell yourself, tell your body, no, you're not. You're just used to chewing. Tell your flesh, you're just used to chewing. <laughs> Hello, anybody else experience that? Amen. Because the moment you break the fast, you realize, man, I'm... I could have, I didn't have to break my fast. Amen. It, it's just a sensation, saints. It's just a chewing sensation. Amen. You just, the, you're used, you've gotten the body used to chewing. It, 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 you know, like any other addiction. We're addicted to eating. <laughs> We're addicted to eating. So, you know, when we pull away from it, that's why fasting is so potent and powerful with God. Because that's one thing that we are really addicted to. And we just feel like we're just going to die if we don't eat, you know? And if you're not fasting, you just might. You might die if you don't eat. <laughs> but if you're fasting, there is, there is almost no limit as to how far you can go on a fast if you're, if you're really given over to it. If you're really given over to it, there's, there's really, if you can get past that first day and the, and the fourth day, that first day and the fourth day, those are my days. That first day, good to go. If I can get past that first day, I'm gone. That, that fourth day, now that's when the enemy is going to come again. You know, he's going to come like you've been fasting 40 days. Amen. <laughs> Glory to God. And he's going to offer you everything. And, and, and when you're fasting, you're going to think about everything that you, that you could eat, things that you don't even eat when you're not fasting. They're going to look so appealing. That's why you don't need to watch TV. Don't watch those commercials. <laughs> Amen. Because, because it's just like me being here in Jamaica. If I turn that television on and, and watch those commercials and all of that, those food commercials, the, they're all American commercials, you know. You don't hardly, I don't ever see, 
hardly see too much Jamaican food on, on the TV. I see all this American food that I eat, all that, you know, and some of that stuff I don't even eat, and I, I start craving it. Lord, when I get home, I'm going to have this, I'm going to have that. I'm going to this restaurant, that restaurant. I don't even go to those places when I'm there, you, you know. And that's why the enemy will do you when you're fasting. Glory to God. He will, there, there'll be your, your day. You're going to have a day where he's going to flood you with wanting this or wanting that and, and whatnot. Just resist. Just say, no, this is an, an addiction that I refuse. I am not addicted to eating. I am not addicted to eating. I am going to sacrifice and, and give this as an offering unto the Lord. And when you do that, resist the enemy, and he does what? He flees. Amen. Glory to God. Are you hearing God? Amen. Hallelujah. Notice what he says here. He said, they fasted, and they say, you don't see. We afflicted our soul, and you act as if you don't have any knowledge of it. You exact all your labors. God said, that's why, because you exact all your labors, and you, and you do all those things. You're down at the beach. You're down at the, the everywhere. You're going to, running around, busy body, and when you ought to be talking to me, you ought to find some time to spend with me. That's what the fast is about. Isn't it about you laying aside, getting away from people, glory to God, and spending that time with me? And we can't tell God, well, I'm on this job, and I just can't, I just can't find. Yes, you can. Pick the time for you to fast. Pick a time for your fast and pick a time where you know that during the day you're going to have, you're going to be able to give God some time. I would suggest in the morning time, give him that, the early morning hours before you go to work. Give him that. Then on that, that what would be lunch break, give him that. Talk to him. Sit down and talk to the Lord. Commune with the Lord. Listen. Read the Bible. Whatever it takes to commune with him during that time, give him that hour. Give him an hour. Because when you think about it, some, when you're not fasting, sometimes you go through the whole day and never touch your Bible. Think about it now. Sometimes you actually go through a day and don't pray. How many days that you can say that every day I spend at least an hour with the Lord. See? A lot of people can't say that, that they spend an, a whole hour every day with God. So he's saying, now, when you're fasting, don't, don't tell me you're fasting. You just, because if you're not talking to me, if you're not communing with me, you're just, you're just starving yourself. You're just doing without eating. That fast is not, is not um, edifying. It doesn't edify God, and it's not doing anything for you. So he says, if you're fasting, talk to me. Talk to me. Come and talk to me. Find some time to talk to me. Give me that hour in the morning if you're working. Give me that hour in the, in the noonday when you take your lunch break. Find mid-afternoon, the watch hour, somewhere around 3 o'clock if possible. Find some time. Find some time in the mid middle of the afternoon to talk to me. And come back around 6 in the evening and talk to me. Talk to me. Now, if you're in a position, if you're in a, in a place where, where you, it's impossible, you may be working at a factory somewhere, or some, or, and you know, you may, you, let's go to an extreme. You might be in a factory where you're on the assembly line and you can't take, you know, you can't walk away from that assembly line to go pray. Amen. Honey, you can stand right there and pray. Nobody know, has to know what you're doing. The Bible says pray in secret anyway. You can stand right there while you're putting that stuff together and pray. And, and, and what I tell the Lord when I'm doing stuff like that, I say, God, you know, I, you know, you know, I want to give this company what I owe them. I want to give them a decent day's work. So, um, but I need to talk to you. So now you're going to have to help me stay focused on this and you at the same time. <laughs> oh, yeah, and he'll do it. Show me how to keep my, my work up 
as well as commune with you. See, because God deal with our hearts, saints. If that's your heart, God will help you. He will. He will help you. He's not, God want you to talk to him. And he wants to talk back. He wants to talk back. And let me tell you something that's really, really, really nice about fasting. That I want you to learn. That's why I'm going to keep you fasting from henceforth. You're going to be fasting a lot. Because you know what? I want you to learn how to hear God. I want you to learn his voice. I want you to have confidence in that still, small voice that you hear on the inside so that, so that you'll move away from this thing, something told me. I want, and, and I want you to be able to say, the Lord said, and know it was God and not just your mind. You, you understand? I want you to be sure of that. And you know, you know what, will, what, what will bring that, in, that, that surety in uh, very quickly? A pure heart. A pure heart. You see, God does not want to embarrass you. He does not want to trick you or deceive you into thinking that he said something that he didn't say. God wants you to know if he said something or not. He really wants you to know. So God is saying to us, he's saying, if your heart is pure, how does, how does the heart get pure? You want nothing. When you want nothing, when you want nothing, outside of the will of God. When the Lord is indeed your shepherd and you do not want, the heart is pure. Do you understand? That's when the heart is pure. When you have given yourself completely over to God. Completely over to God. When you've given yourself, I mean completely over, until you trust him in every aspect of your life. Every aspect. When you trust God in every aspect of your life, you trust him to give you direction. You trust him to give you instruction. When you really, really trust God and want nothing from his people but to love them, that's purity. That's purity of heart. And when purity is there, when the heart is pure, the pure in heart shall see God. That's when real communion takes place. That's when you get God to responding to you. Because remember what he said now, and he's not going to change it. You remember God said he changed not? Something God said, God said, only the pure in heart shall see him. But he said something else. He said, if we regard iniquity in our heart, he will not, what? Hear us. He will not hear. So he doesn't care if you, if, if you do without eating for 40 days a night. You just did without eating. Because God is not hearing that. That's what he's telling these people in Israel. I'm not hearing that. I don't, I'm, I'm not, I don't, I don't take the affliction of your soul. Uh, I don't take that as a, as a legitimate offering. That's not a, a legitimate offering to me because your heart's not pure. You have iniquity in your heart. You have iniquity in your heart. And if you have iniquity in your heart, I'm not listening to you. I'm not listening. So if, you, if the heart is pure, there's no iniquity, and you want nothing. See, see, iniquity comes when you want something from people. Or you want something from God that he won't deliver. If there's no wantonness, there's no lust. If there's no wantonness, 
there's no strife. If there's no wantonness, there's no greed, there's no envy, there's no jealousy. All of that comes because of wantonness. So he said, if you don't want, if there's no wantonness in you, then you will love the people of God. But I wonder about this. I wonder, I even, for, you know, doesn't have anything to do with fasting. But I wonder, I wonder how, how people will, how, how saints of God expect to even just make it to heaven, period, and don't love people. How do you get to heaven if you don't love people? How do you get to heaven if you if you're alienate yourself from people? How do you get to heaven if you don't serve God by serving his people? You don't get there. And so God is looking at all of that. When we fast now, when we come to God, he's looking at your life. He's looking at your life. What is your life? What have you rendered to the body of Christ? What are you rendering? How, how is your disposition toward my people? What is it? What is your disposition toward my people? Why should I listen to you? What is your disposition? What are you giving to my people? What do you do? What do you do? What do you add to the body? What do you add to the body of Christ? What, do you, what, what is your work in the kingdom? What can I look at and see that you're actually doing to further my kingdom, saith the Lord? Are you hearing God? So now we want to fast and we want to, we want to, we want to make our, our fast. It's supposed to be this, 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 this tremendous sacrifice that we're making. You know, we're doing without food every day. And, oh, Lord, and you're, if God is not paying any attention to that, this is futile. I want God to hear me. I want him to hear me. Now, now he's going to ask. He's going to ask, and you're going to hear this voice right in your little soul. What do you want? What do you really want from me? That's what he's going to ask. What do, you, what do you want? Seeing is how. One or the other. Seeing is how. You have broken my laws. You don't love my people. Or you've been a good and faithful servant. So what do you want? What is it you want? You know what I want when I go to God? I guess I can tell you. It's no secret. I said, Lord, I don't, I don't, I don't want anything material. I'm not saying that. You, I'm saying what what I want. Okay, this had nothing to do with you. But I said, God, I, you know, you bless me. I'm blessed. I'm alive. I eat when I need to eat. I sleep when I need to sleep. I'm not outside. I'm not in the streets. You've taken very good care of me. So. There's nothing materialistic I want. What I want is wisdom. I want the kind of wisdom that only you can give. I want wisdom of the word. Because the word is my delightsome. That's what I delight in. I delight in the word of God. That's my food. That's my real food, the word of God. I want to know, I want to know you through your word and your spirit. What else do I want? I want your spirit to rest upon me. I want it to rest upon me like it rested upon Paul. And in fact, I was telling the Lord about that. I was telling the Lord how I want 
you know. <laughs> I'm going to let you in on the little prayer I prayed. I was talking to the Lord, and I said, Lord, I want that, I want the anointing to rest upon me, you know, like it rested upon Paul. Then I started thinking. I said, Lord, do I have to get beaten with rods and all that stuff just to get it? Oh, God, I'm a bit old for that, Lord. God. I said, God, if you can find a way. <laughs> I'm serious. I told the Lord, I said, God, do I have to get beaten, you know, because I know what Paul went through. Good guy, you know, shipwrecked and all that. God, I'm, and then I start thinking I'm on an island. Oh, Jesus. The plane might go down and I'd be in the water. But oh, Lord, I know those no sharks and barracudas. I guess I said, Lord, do I have to go through all of that just, just for the anointing? I start, I'm serious saying that. I'm, I'm, I was talking to the Lord just like that. And, and I thought about it and I thought about it. And I said, well, okay. If I got to go through all of that, I believe that you will strengthen me the way I can bear it, if that's what it takes. Because I'm looking at the fruit that could be produced if the anointing did rest upon me like it did Paul. That's what I'm looking at. I'm looking at the fruit that could be produced. I'm looking at the nations that could be turned upside down. I'm looking at how Christ, the gospel, could be furthered if that anointing was on me like it was on him. Glory to God. So I said, God, you know, it's kind of worth it. You know, it's, it's and I was kind of slow about saying that. <laughs> but, but it, I, and I finally, I, it, I, before, the, before I ended my prayer, I said, if that's what it take, Lord, so be it. If, that, if, if that's what it's going to take. Because Saints, I don't want to see one person go to hell. If we can save anybody out of hell, it's worth it. It's worth it to keep someone from an eternity of suffering and pain. Fasting will help you to mature faster. Because one of the purposes or intent of the, of, the, of the Father is to direct our growth, our spiritual growth. One of, one of the, his intents is to direct our spiritual growth and control our growth patterns. And so in doing so, there's going to be tests, there's going to be trials, there are going to be situations that call for suffering, call for us making the right choices. And those choices, those options will be to do what's righteous and suffer for doing it or to choose an alternative route, which is contrary to the will of God. Fasting is, is going to help us to mature, to grow up into Christ. Because, see, what God wants, what, what is he trying to achieve? Those patriots of old, the ones in the New Covenant, they understood something. They understood Christ in them. And they understood, especially the Apostle Paul, they understood that they had to enter into the fellowship of his suffering. They understood that, right? So when they fasted and when they prayed, they were seeking the Father for strength and a spirit of might to be able to bear 
the sufferings of Christ. To be able to bear the situations and circumstances that, that this flesh would be led into. Because it wasn't Christ's option to go into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. Who wants to live in the wilderness? But the Holy Spirit led him into the wilderness. And so we don't know where this, where the Holy Spirit will lead us. We don't know where it will lead us into what situations it will lead us into. But we can, we can be sure that it's going to lead us into situations that try us and test us and prove us. It's going to be led into situations of suffering. So we need to learn how to fast and have that communion with God. Because just like the Holy Spirit picks us up, when I say it picks us up, takes, takes away that real excruciating hunger, you know, to where we can't seem to make it. We can't seem to make it from day to day. No. He deals with that. And how does he deal with it? He deals with us through consolation. He deals with us through, amen, um, being a comforter. He's a comforter in a fast. He's a comforter. And he will comfort us in our trials. He will comfort us in tribulation. He'll comfort us in all of our tests. He'll comfort us in suffering. And just as he comforts us in tests and trials and suffering, he comforts us in fasting. But you won't know that until you do. You won't know that. And see, we, we have to fast in order to, to perfect that communion with God. That's what fasting does. It helps us perfect that communion with God. It gets perfected. And now that voice, you begin to recognize it, that, that still small voice in your inner man, you begin to recognize it as God. So what is his purpose? Back to what I was saying earlier, his purpose, these guys knew that they had to enter into the fellowship of Christ's suffering, but they also knew that Christ was living right there in them. So their fasting was, Lord, give me the strength. They was asking the Father. They were, they were, they were depending upon the Father to give them the strength, the, the spirit of might that, that they needed in order to to go through the things that, that were ordained for Christ in this body to go through, for the, for the Christ that was in them. You notice Christ said to, to, to the disciples, he says, I have, uh, he says, they're going to deliver you up uh, to be persecuted and, and, and imprisoned and all these things. He said, but I have overcome the world. So Christ is going to go in. He's going to take this body into suffering. He's going to take this body into situations that we would opt out of. We would, we would, you know, if we had an option, we would say, oh, no, 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 I'm going this way. But the Holy Spirit will lead and guide this, this, this flesh into trying situations to, to establish our preference. We'll talk more about that in, in, in um, Founders Week. But that's what it's for, to establish our preference, to reveal what our preference is, that we prefer Christ regardless of the suffering, that it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what we have to go through. I prefer Christ, and I will stay there and stick with Christ regardless of what it costs me. There has to be a trial to reveal that, and these guys understood that, and that's why Jesus' testimony to them before the Holy Ghost came don't worry about those kind of tests because I've already overcome it. What is he saying? He's saying as long as you are in submission to me, as long as you're in agreement with me, you'll pass that test. That's what he's saying. He's saying I'm in you and these guys understood that. They understood it better than we do. They understood that Jesus was in their flesh and that whatever they were going through, it was because of Christ. It wasn't because they were believers in Christ. It was because Christ was in them. Do you understand what I'm saying? The enemy is still attacking the Son of God. He's, he's still attacking Jesus. He hates Jesus. And so these, these guys, they understood that. Paul and Peter, James, John, Andrew, all of them, Matthew, all of them, these guys understood. They understood that, that Jesus is in this body now. 
He's in me. And it's, and, and the scriptures say all who live godly will suffer. There's no way to live godly in this world and not suffer persecution. But we will suffer persecution. So what is fasting for? Fasting is so that we will commune with the Father for that consolation. Commune with the Father so that we can, we can experience the power of the comforter. Just like we experience the power of the comforter when we, when we can fast for days and days and days and days and days and, 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 and not faint and be strong and healthy. He said in trials and in tribulation, you can, you, can, you can have that same comfort so that you will not be offended by the trials that you have to go through, the sufferings that you have to go through for Christ's sake. You won't be offended by them. Are you understanding God? Are you understanding God? Amen. Are you learning? Glory to God. Are you really learning? Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm going to be doing more, about, more on this. We're going to talk more about this. Glory to God. I want us to continue the fast. Amen. Tomorrow, let's pick it up at 6 o'clock in the morning. Amen. Let's pick it up at 6 and let's go to 6. Um, I would advise us to come back to the sanctuary tomorrow. Hello? I think prayer, commu you know, this community prayer is good. It's good for us to come together at 6 o'clock. Let's, let's get here at 6. Let's try to get here at 6 o'clock tomorrow, okay? Let's try to get here at 6, and we won't keep you long. We'll do one hour before the Lord. We'll do a watch hour. Amen? We'll do a watch hour at 6 o'clock. Praise the Lord. I'm going to ask um, Pastor to come. Amen? And take us up in prayer. Amen. Praise the Lord. God bless you. The Lord has said much to us and has basically shown us the disposition that we really should be in, in terms of the fast. And he has left, you know, the Lord speak through Doc and keeps saying that the Lord leave no loose ends. He ties up all the loose ends. So whether we are on the job or not, whether we have been in sin or not, you know, the Lord is just dealing with all of us, and he doesn't want to leave any out. And so what the Lord really wants is for us to either continue in a pure heart in the fast or to purify our hearts to continue the fast so that we can truly hear from him. So we're going we're gonna to thank him for the fast. We're going to thank him for even though he's enlightened us. We're going to thank him for strengthening us. We're going to thank him for what he's going to do in this fast. And those of us who remember the things that uh, Doc spoke on about Sunday, uh, that we need to pray about allowing the word to really be solidified in us and for the people to understand the word and so on. You remember the four or five things that she would have mentioned on Sunday. So as we pray, we need to bring those things to the Lord, as well as for our sister, our bishop, and her situation back in the States. There's, there's something else the Lord spoke to me about today that we really need to pray about on this fast. Um, we need to pray for Brother Ronald. Amen. He's, he's very sick. We need, to, we need to pray for him. And also the Lord said that we need to pray for the Christians that are being persecuted and killed. Amen. Little children are being beheaded. Um, thousands of Christians are dying every day over in Syria and, and, and Iraq. Glory to God. By ISIS. Amen. We need to pray for God to put an end to ISIS. We need to pray for God to put an end to it. Amen? If the people of God would pray fervent prayers, God will hear us. We need to pray for God to put an end to ISIS. Military can't do anything. Amen? But God can. God can put an end to it. And let us pray for, the, for those who are being tortured. And not only the Christians, but 
the people, the population that is being tortured and refugees are running away for their lives and whatnot. Let us pray for God to intervene. Amen? Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. So let's bow our heads and look to Jesus. Father, we, we just thank you so much for who you are to us. We thank you, Lord, for your word tonight and your word that you have just been pouring out to us, Lord. Real gems, treasures, Lord God. Hallelujah. Father, we just honor and exalt you in this place. Father, we lift you up. Hallelujah. Father, we, we exalt you above all else, Lord. We place you in the highest place inside of our hearts. Hallelujah, Lord. We, 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 we give you authority to reign on the throne of our hearts, Lord Jesus. We cast everything down, O oh God, that we might have exalted above you. And Lord, tonight, Lord, even in your presence, Lord, because you have spoken, you know all of our hearts, Lord. We come repenting, Lord Jesus, because we have not all walked or we have not consistently walked as we should, Lord. We have not yet obeyed every word that has proceeded from your mouth, O oh God, that you have spoken, that we have understood, Lord. So we have dishonored you in different ways, Lord Jesus. And so tonight, Lord, we bear our hearts before you. And Lord, we admit, O oh God, that we have not been all that we should be, Lord Jesus. But Father, we ask that you'll cleanse our hearts, Lord. We ask that you'll just cause us to walk with the mind of Christ, Lord. Lord, that we will just honor you in all things, Lord. Because we have been equipped with everything, Lord God, to honor you when, we speak, when you speak to us, Lord. So tonight, Lord, we ask for forgiveness, Lord. We ask you to forgive us, Lord. Father, you know our hearts, Lord. You know the hearts that need to be crying out for forgiveness even now, Lord Jesus. Because there's no place that we can hide from you, Lord. There's no place, oh God, where we will go and do anything and you will not see, Lord. And just because you've spoken tonight, Lord, we repent as a church before you, Lord Jesus. Father, we don't want anybody left behind, Lord Jesus. Father, we sang tonight that we are your friend, Lord Jesus. And Father, we thank you, Lord, that we are your friend indeed if we obey you, Lord Jesus. Father, we don't want to be on the side of being your enemy at all, Lord God. So tonight, Lord, we just ask of you to forgive us, Lord, and to strengthen us, Lord Jesus. Oh, Lord, you have poured out so much into us, Lord Jesus. And we know this is not going to waste, Lord. You're going to get that which you have set out to get from our lives, Lord. So tonight, Lord, we just recommit to ourselves individually and collectively to you and to the purpose of Christ, Lord. For this thing that you, you have predetermined for our lives, Lord, from long at the beginning of the, before the foundation of the world, Lord Jesus, that we will be to the praise of your glory, that men will see Christ, that men will see God. So, Father, we thank you for this fast that you have called, Lord, for us to just consecrate ourselves, Lord Jesus, afresh unto you, Lord. Father, as, as, as our pastor said, Lord, we don't want for it, oh God, to be a ritual, Lord. We want it to be part of our lifestyle, Lord Jesus, that we just become so sensitized to you that we can hear you if you speak in the softest whisper, Lord Jesus. And our hearts are poised to obey you in everything that you say, oh God. So, Father, tonight we just want to thank you. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for our understanding of salvation, Lord God. We thank you that we know where we are, Lord Jesus. We thank you that we know where our souls are placed, oh God. Inside of you where we live, oh God, and we move and we have our being, Lord Jesus. And we want to be settled and established inside of that place in the spirit, Lord God. We want to be strengthened, Lord God, so where we are placed, we remain there and walk there, oh God. Help us not to be peeping out, Lord Jesus. Help us to be single-eyed, Lord God. Cause us to be just so focused on you, Lord, oh God, that nothing, Lord, will be able to take our eyes off you, Lord. Help us to remain in sync with you, oh God. Lord Jesus, the entire creation is waiting, oh God, on us to walk, oh God, the way you designed for us to walk, Lord God. Help us, Jesus, every single one of us, Lord God, every single one of us, oh God, 
We lay aside everything, Lord. Every weight, Lord Jesus. Every distraction, Lord God. Every care of the world and care of this life, Lord God. And we are looking steadfast unto our author and finisher, Lord God. Of who started this thing inside of us, oh God. We are looking to you, Jesus. Because we believe you, Lord. We believe you, Lord, that we are going to walk inside of the fullness of the man Christ Jesus, Lord. And we believe that people are going to look at Jesus and say, who is this? And who are these? But we are none but the body of Christ, oh God. So tonight, we believe you, Lord. We believe you. We believe you, Lord. And we understand what believing you means, Lord. So we take, Lord, our hearts, our souls, our lives, and everything that you've said to us, Lord. And we commit it to you, Jesus, because we trust you. Because we trust you, Jesus. So, Father, all of these revelations that you have been speaking to us, and the progression of the revelation that you're making known to us, Lord, that we must be your friends, Lord. You must consider us your friends, Lord. To be opening up all of these secrets and mysteries and deep things. Just talking to us, Lord Jesus. Father, we appreciate it, Lord. It is causing us to just fall in love with you deeper, Lord Jesus. It is causing us, oh God, to walk in a deeper way with you, Lord. It is causing us to love each other more, Lord. It is causing us to love souls more, Lord Jesus. Father, we are falling in love again and again and over and over and deeper and deeper, Lord. And this is your work, Lord. It is what you are doing in our hearts, Lord. That oneness that we feel with each other, it's you doing it, Lord. That love that we are feeling for each other, a strong, deep love and concern that we have for each other, it's you doing it, Lord Jesus. The concern that we have for the lost, Lord, it's you doing it, Lord Jesus. So, Father, we ask that you'll establish us in this word. This word that has caused us to know that this is the body of Christ. This word that has caused us to know that we are the flesh and bones of Jesus. Literally walk in the earth, Lord. Cause us not to dishonor you, Lord. Cause that our lies, oh God, will line up, Lord Jesus. That we will just be iron sharpening iron as we look at each other, Lord. Even tonight when we look around at each other, Lord. All we can say, I see Jesus. All I could say, Lord, I see Jesus. I saw Jesus in those praise and worship um, uh, praises. I saw Jesus in my brothers and sisters. I saw Jesus. But Father, the world needs to see Jesus. And it requires a life that is totally given over to you. A life that wants nothing, Lord. So remove any kind of want from us, Lord. Father, remove any kind of lust from us, Lord. However it lurks in a little corner, Lord. However it seems innocent, Lord Jesus. We ask you, Lord Jesus, to cleanse our hearts, Lord, of every unrighteousness, every unrighteous thought, every unrighteous desire. Oh, God, every unrighteous sentiment, Lord God. Let us listen for you, Lord, and let us obey you, Lord Jesus. Father, we ask, oh God, that as your word continues to come, Lord Jesus, that your people will really hear you, that your people will really see you, Lord, that your, your people will really just embrace all of what you are saying, Lord, that we will all come into that agreement, one full-time agreement, that Jesus is the Lord of these vessels. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Father, you created this universe, Lord. Father, you know all of what's happening, Lord, in the different parts of the world, Lord God. You see how Satan has entered into the hearts of men and we have become hateful. And men have become wicked, Lord. And men are slaying each other, Lord. They are like brute hearts inside of them, Lord Jesus. And it's almost like the devil is having a, a ball game, Lord Jesus.
But Father, you have cautioned and commanded us to pray for men everywhere, Lord Jesus. And so we are praying, Lord, for the four corners of the earth, Lord. For all that you are seeing, O oh God, on planet earth tonight, Lord, in this season, Lord. You see what ISIS is doing, Lord. You see the barefacedness of how they are operating, Lord. How they are killing the innocent, Lord Jesus. How they are creating mayhem, Lord God. How they seem to want to take over the world, O oh God. But Father, we come against them now, Lord. By Jesus Christ, Lord. Lord God, by the power of the Spirit of God, that Lord, that you will preserve some for salvation, Lord God. You will preserve some, oh God, that Christ will be seen, Lord. And Father, because nothing is impossible to or with you, Lord Jesus, we ask that even some of those perpetrators, Lord, will come face to face to, with you, Lord, and will ask, what must I do to be saved, Lord Jesus? Father, you died for all mankind, Lord Jesus. So that includes ISIS, Lord. That includes all of the rebels of this world, Lord Jesus. Father, we ask, oh God, that those who are persecuted because they have become Christians, that indeed the comfort that you comfort with, Lord, that will be their portion, Lord. That you will comfort them with such a comfort, Lord, that they will still look on and say, I will not deny Jesus Christ. Strength their resolve, Lord. Be that spirit, Lord, that strengthen them deep on the inside, Lord Jesus. That even when they are killing, if they have to be killed, if they are the ones whose blood would have to be shed as the martyrs who have gone before, Lord Jesus, that the very perpetrators, Lord, will be convicted, Lord God, by the presence that you are in them, Holy Ghost. Is there anything that you cannot get glory out of God? Is there anything that you do not know how to get glory out of it? Is there anything that takes you by surprise? Is it not that you have predetermined and seen all of this before, long, long before, Lord Jesus? Then glorify yourself, Lord. Be glorified. Be glorified, Lord Jesus. Be glorified, Lord. Help us, Lord, to consider these things even when we are in our own quiet time with you. Not only when we come collectively, Lord, in a, in a communal way like this, Lord. But, Father, cause us to badger you, Lord. Cause us to be faithful, Lord Jesus. Cause us, oh God, to be real with you, Lord. Father, we want to find another place in you over the next two days, Lord Jesus. Father, I don't want to go through a starve, Lord Jesus. I want to experience you in a different way. We want to experience you in a different way, Lord Jesus. So we are going to be real with you, Jesus. And when we are real with you, Lord, when we are real with each other that's been real with you, Lord Jesus. Help us not even to be hide behind the, the cloak of pride, Lord, of not even wanting to talk to each other if we need deliverance, Lord. To know, oh God, that you reside in each of us and you can comfort with counsel and understanding and wisdom inside of our interaction over the next few days and for the rest of our lives. So, Father, we ask, oh God, that this will be a time when you will be delighted, Lord. We will be delighted. You will be delighted. You will be ecstatic. I believe you can be ecstatic, you know, Lord. Because you have caused us to feel ecstatic, ecstasy inside of our own worship with you, Lord. You've made us feel like we're fanatics, Lord. And we don't care, Lord Jesus. Because we're giving you all that we can give, Lord. In the name of Jesus, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Father, I pray for a special strengthening of, of our past, Lord. Father, look at our life, and, and I'm, I'm just provoked. We are just provoked, oh God, by our genuineness, Lord God. By the way she has, she has walked before us, Lord Jesus. By the way she has carried us in our hearts, Lord. For the times when we know she has prayed, Lord, and lifted us up before you, Lord. We ask, oh God, for, for that thing, oh God, that is in our heart, the anointing that she has asked for, Lord Jesus. Mm. 
that it rests on our Lord Jesus. Father, we believe as an apostle, Lord, you would want that anointing to rest on her, Lord. She asked for it, Lord Jesus. We desire to see it, Lord God. So we ask, oh God. She talked about the cost, Lord. But whatever the cost is, Lord, you are able, Lord Jesus, as she told you, Lord Jesus. We want a demonstration of the power of this gospel, Lord. The way we saw it in the scripture, Lord. We want to see it in this season, Lord Jesus. So we ask, oh God, that you'll continue to speak to her. That you'll continue to strengthen her, Lord Jesus. That you'll continue to let her know that her labor of love is not in vain, Lord Jesus. That, Lord, because she has been obedient to you, Lord. Because she has looked ahead, Lord. And see, oh God, what can be produced, Lord. She has given over herself to you. And you have been using her, Lord. And you have been changing our lives, Lord. Look what you're doing, Lord. It's beautiful, Lord. And it's all because of you. It's all to your glory. So, Lord, even as you speak to her, Lord, about Founders Week, Lord, we just ask, oh God, that you'll continue to cause her hands to type and to write those things that needs to be written down, Lord. That you'll be with her, Lord. That she will be the oracle of God speaking, oh God, in the next two weeks, Lord Jesus. That lives will continue to be changed, Lord. Whether we are in the venue or we are elsewhere watching and listening, Lord. That we'll be one together, Lord Jesus. Partaking, oh God, of what you will say to us. Strengthen and encourage her, Lord. I know sometimes she needs to be encouraged like all of us, Lord. Encourage her with your own self, Lord Jesus. You know the ways to come. And you know how to do your thing. And you know what she needs, Lord. Strengthen and encourage and touch her body, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord God. Touch her body. Keep her better, Lord. Keep her well, Lord Jesus. We ask this, Lord, in your name, Lord. Father, we raise up Bishop Lorna to you, Lord. And that situation, Lord. You've seen her faithfulness over the years, Lord. And you've rewarded her sister with the Holy Ghost, Lord. What better could you give? What more could you give? What greater could you give, Lord Jesus, than one to receive salvation, Lord God? That mystery, Lord, that great big thing, Lord Jesus, there's nothing bigger than that, Lord. And Father, what an encouragement it is that even in her state, Lord, when we call, she's just an encouragement. She's just talking Jesus. She's just speaking Jesus. She's just singing Jesus. And Father, it's not a camouflage, Lord. It's coming from a place that is deep on the inside, Lord, because it connects with something inside of us that we know it is you, Lord, and resonates deeply, Lord. So we bless you, Lord, for saving her, Lord Jesus. Comfort her in her situation, Lord. And do for her, Lord, what only you can do, Lord. Comfort and strengthen Bishop Lorna in this situation, too, Lord. And all the immediate family members and friends who are affected, Lord. And as you do that, Lord, make this situation a situation that brings somebody to know you. Let this be something to glorify your own name, dear Jesus. So, Father, we thank you tonight. We thank you tonight. Lord, we thank you tonight. We thank you tonight. We thank you tonight, Lord. We thank you tonight, Lord Jesus. We thank you. We thank you, Lord. These are grateful hearts, you know, Lord. These are grateful hearts, you know, Lord. It's just for us to just reflect a little uh, from where you're taking us, Lord. From where you're taking us, Lord. We just have to be reminded, Lord, of your goodness, Lord. Some of us could have died in our sins, Lord Jesus. Some of us are coming from some dark places, Lord. Some of us are coming from some very deep, deep places, Lord Jesus. And so, Lord, we'll never forget what you've done, Lord. We'll never forget what you've done, Lord Jesus. We'll never forget what you've done, Lord Jesus, when you saved us, Lord God. We are grateful, Lord. We're grateful. We're grateful, Lord Jesus. We ask you to strengthen us over the next two days, Lord. And even as we have been 
and courage tonight, oh God. May tomorrow even be a day, oh God, that is a tighter day with us and you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Lord, that we will eke out the time that we need to eke out, Lord, to be with you, Lord. Because as we know, it, it will still be 24 hours, Lord. But if you have called this fast, and we know you have, and this is a priority to us as it is to you, Lord, we are going to be spending time together, Lord. So help us, Lord Jesus, to be sensitive to you. Help us to talk to you, even when we're doing our counseling, even when we're typing our letters, even when we're listening into meetings. Let us talk to you from our hearts, Lord. We can talk to you sometimes even without opening our mouths, Lord. You hear our hearts, Lord Jesus. So it doesn't have to be legalistic and ritualistic, Lord Jesus. We can talk to you, Lord Jesus. We can talk to you, Lord. We can talk to you, Lord. We just love you so much. You've just placed that love inside of us, Lord. It's a big love, Lord Jesus. It could only be your own agape love that makes us feel this way that we feel towards you, Lord. We love you big, big, Lord Jesus. We love you, Lord. We love you. We love you so much. And the test of our love, Lord, is that we obey you, Lord Jesus. Lord, we are set to obey you, Lord Jesus. We are poised to continue to obey you, Lord Jesus. We're in a disposition that all we want to hear is what you want to be done, Lord. Strengthen us, Lord, to continue to obey you, Lord. Even, Lord Jesus, as the apostle said, Lord, that we are fasted because a trial is going to come to test us. Suffering is going to come to test us. Tribulation is going to come to test us, Lord. But if we agree from this point, Lord, if we agree from this point, Lord, if we decide from this point, Lord, that it's you all the way, Lord, irrespective of the cost, Lord, you will strengthen us, Lord Jesus. We thank you. We praise you.